What is up? Daniel here with the Virtual Robotics Studio, and it's time for our next build video. Um, so today, what we're going to try to do is get our uh, Max 90 Degree Gearbox fully assembled and attached to the robot. We're also going to do kind of the upper uh, arm mount bearing blocks that are going to go onto our main beam. You're going to need some the bolts that came with those. We're going to want our Andy Mark 24-2 sprockets. Remember, if you have the rev ones, they're going to work fine. Just going to be a little bit different on the length when we cut our hex shaft, which you need as well. Uh, I've got six half-inch hex bearings for this. And something else, we tried to save some of the extra grease. I think I only needed to use one of the bags, or a little bit less than one of the bags of grease uh, when we were putting our chassis together for those tough boxes, the gear boxes there. Or if you just have some, I've got some white lithium grease, that's going to work fine. We need a little bit of grease when we put our gearbox together. All right, I think that's all the parts. Let's clear the table, bring in the robot, and get back to work. All right, so we are going to attach our bearing blocks to the top of our main beams here. If you remember, we drilled some pretty big holes up at the top. Uh, and that hole has to be big enough that this hex shaft will be able to go through. Actually, when we're done, we're going to have two short pieces of hex shaft, one on each side. Uh, but we're going to use this long piece all the way through when we line stuff up, because then we'll know that both of the holes are lined up with each other. Um, so the first thing is, these are the thrifty bot, uh, thrifty bot bearing blocks, and half inch uh, the hex bearings. And if you look at the thrifty bot bearing blocks, there are two sides to them. One side, everything is nice and flat. The other side, we sort of have these posts sticking up in the sides, and then that middle hole, you can see there's an extra little lip going around there. That's where the bearing is going to go. So on the bearing, remember there is a flange side, that's that extra little bit that sticks out. We're going to put the bearing in on the side where there's that little shelf, and that's where the flange is going to sit. So we'll drop it in this way. And with these, some of these can be pretty tight, so I usually just try to push in different places, and it goes down a little bit more each time I push. And hopefully, we can get this one all the way in. You'll know that it is all the way in, because actually, when this is pressed all the way flat, it's going to be flat against the edge here. So if it's sticking up at all, um, it should be able to go a little bit farther. All right, so that's one of those done. We're going to do that four times, well, three more times. That was a little looser. And it is good that these holes are a little bit tight. You want bearing holes to generally be as close fitting as possible. And that one is nice and flat. And our last one. Oh, easy. All right. So we're good. Now, if you have some trouble pushing it in all the way, you can get a soft mallet and tap on it. It also helps if you get a big socket that fits around the outside edge, um, but not touching the bearing plate. You can tap on that as well. Um, with bearings, you want to tap gently, though. We don't want to damage the bearing. And you can tell after you've tapped it in, if you give it a spin and it spins uh, freely, you're in good shape. If you feel some like bumps or clicks as it's spinning, uh, then you might want to swap the bearing out. All right. Oh, and also, if you are tapping it in, notice that the bearing does stick out the bottom. So in order to do that, you're going to have to have it maybe off the edge of the table. Or if you get two pieces of metal, you could support it on the two sides. So when you're tapping on it, there is room for that bearing to drop below the bottom of the plate. All right. The next thing about these bearing blocks is they are not symmetrical. That hole is a little bit shifted to one side. So when we're going to line this up, we're going to have to make sure that we get them both lined up the same way, and we need them both to be sort of lower down. And a good way to check that is if we come over to our robot here, we've got the first hole that we're going to do. And if I line this up, let me try this way, you can kind of see that hole versus that hole compared to the hole that we have drilled here. So this one, right, looks like this hole is going to be in the middle of that hole we drilled. So when this slides up, it's going to be lined up on that hole. If I flip it over, though, you can see that hole is a little bit high. So when we slide it on, it's going to be a little bit too high on the hole that we have there. Let me see if I can put both of them on at once. And you can see the difference. So between these two holes, right? this one is a little bit higher up on the robot. This one is a little bit lower down. What we're looking for is the hole to be lower down. Okay, So we want the smaller gap on the bottom. And we're going to take another one on the inside. And you have to make sure that the one on the inside is also facing the same way. Because if it's not, our holes are not going to line up. So if you want to check first, if you line them up next to each other, if those two holes are next to each other, then you can take this one, flip it over, 
move it to the inside, and we should be good. All right, and to hold these together, we're going to use these one and a half inch long 1032 button heads. And what you'll find is one of the holes, or two of the holes on the outside, is threaded. So you can't just push the bolt through. And two of the holes, it's a clearance hole, and you can slide it straight through. So what we want to do is find the side that's a clearance hole, where you can push it straight through. And when you do that, on the other side, on the other bearing plate, it's going to be able to screw into the threaded hole. So you always go through the hole with nothing, into the hole with thread second. And you can just kind of finger tighten that one. The bottom one, it's going to be diagonal corners. Works, so we're going to screw this one in a little bit. And then the other two holes, we come from the inside, because that's where the clear clearance hole is, into the threaded hole. Get those started. Right, so we have all four bolts in here. Now, we only tighten this sort of finger tight. I want you to make sure that it is not too tight to be able to still slide up and down on our frame here. Because we need to adjust the exact position of this so that it's the right distance, really from our hole on the bottom of the robot, but we can also measure from the top of the frame here. And we want to make sure that our two bearing blocks are the same uh, position on the arm so that the holes will line up. And before we move on, we can do a quick test here. If you push this so it is lined up with the hole, you can grab your hex shaft, completely uncut, the full length, and we can try to slide this through. And if it goes through both sides, and it might be a little tight, but if it goes through both sides like this, then you have your bearing blocks rotated around into the right position. All right, if you can't get it through, it might mean that one of your bearing blocks is rotated the wrong way. All right, so we'll go ahead and take that. Well, actually, we can leave that in. That's, we're going to put it there eventually. Now, what we did here, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. If you want to be extra sure that you're putting your bearing blocks the right way, we can, again, line up with the bearing block that we have here. That's not right, because my holes don't match. So I'm going to flip that around. They line up so that I can transfer straight over to this side. And we can do it one more time with our last bearing block. So that, they line up, so I know I'm the right way. So I'm going to go over and then turn this one around. So they should be good on this side. And then once again, we're going to take those bolts, those button head bolts, and get them started in all four holes. All right, and what we're trying to do now is we're going to try to pass this shaft, this hex shaft, all the way through everything. If it doesn't slide very easily, uh, you might want to loosen up your bolts a little bit. There we go. Um, also, if it really doesn't slide, you can take some sandpaper to this or emery cloth to this and try to just shrink it a little bit. Um, but it should be able to go. All right, and we're going to try to bring that through our other set of bearings over here on the other side. Right, and one, one trick is these bearings, because they're hex shaped, they're going to try to spin when you spin the shaft to get it to line up. But you got to get the hexes to line up. So if you hold the inner part, that's called the inner race of the bearing, uh, that will make it so the bearing doesn't spin and allow you to sort of readjust your aim to get the shaft through. All right, so we are now through on both sides. This is going to help make sure that these bearings stay lined up. But we still have this ability to go up and down on the robot frame for our final position. So there are a few different ways you can measure this. And they're all probably fine, because when we put the chain on, there's an inline chain tensioner that's going to let us adjust. So if our positioning is slightly wrong, everything is still going to work. But the most important thing, I think, for this step is we want to make sure that the two bearing blocks are lined up with each other. So we want them kind of the same distance from maybe the top here, or the same distance from our uh, main pivot hole down at the bottom of the robot. Uh, I think I'm going to measure to the top, because that seems a very convenient place to measure. All right, so if you wanted to measure from the top to the center of our shaft, the center of the hole, it should be about six inches. So what I'm going to do, just to make it sort of easy to see, is you can either put it so that the point of this hex is facing you know, kind of where you think the center of um, the bearing would be, or put the flat side there, and we can kind of look for the middle of that. I'm going to make my point 
point towards the hole on our bracket here. And that hole on the bracket we can also measure to. That should also be six inches away from the top of our frame. So right now, when I measure this, I am past six inches. So my stuff is too low down. So we're going to slide it up until, yeah, I like that, I like that hole on the top there. I'm going to slide it up until it looks like the middle of the hole is at six inches. And just by sort of tightening these bolts, it's not going to move anymore. So I'll grab my hex key here. This should be an eighth inch hex key. And I'll just tighten up a couple of these. And since nothing is really happening, there's no load on this right now, it's not going to move if you snug them up just a little bit. So I'll snug up those bolts. And you can see this side now really doesn't want to move. It's sort of clamped in place. We can do last one, too. We'll snug it up. And then I'm going to just measure again and make sure stuff didn't move on me. And again, when you're measuring on the outside of stuff with a tape measure, you want to pull so it stretches out. When you're measuring on the inside of stuff, to account for the thickness of that little tab, you actually want to push it in so it's nice and flat. So you don't want to try to stretch it out here. You want to push it in so that that gap is gone. And if I measure to the hole that I have here, I am pretty close to six inches. I might be slightly, slightly too close. But again, as long as I match that on this side, I'm going to be happy. So once again, I will go to the other side of the robot here, measure this one up. And I'm going to move this up until it is six inches to the middle of the hole again. That looks good. And then I'm going to snug up these bolts as well. All right. And after all of the bolts are tightened, we kind of find out if our alignment is good or not by whether or not the shaft will move. So if you're able to slide the shaft out, then your alignment is probably good enough. If it's very tight, mine is probably pretty good. But if it's very tight and you can't move it, you're just going to loosen up the bolts, realign one of the sides. You can maybe leave the first one you did fixed, loosen up the second one, realign it, see if it goes a little bit easier. Um, but it should slide out nicely, maybe with a little bit of force. And now. Our positions are basically set. So if you didn't check to make sure they're really tight, you can tighten these down. You don't need to over tighten these. Um, just make sure they're nice and snug. And we'll do one more check uh, to put the shaft back in after we've tightened them down all the way. All right, so if I can get the shaft to go back through, then my positioning is good. And we'll double check our measurement one last time. But I think we're going to be all set with this step. Got to get the hex to line up. There it is. And there we go. So I'm back through, made it through all four of the bearings, which means they're pretty close to perfectly lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out now. We don't need it up here. There we go. And set it down. All right, and we have one more step to do here, and that is these bearing blocks are pinched on to our frame right now. But it's only the friction of being pinched on that's stopping them from sliding up and down on our frame. So just to be extra sure that they don't move, what we can do is we can drill and we can tap one of the holes, um, or drill, sorry, drill and rivet one of the holes. Then we'll have a rivet holding this plate in place. So this plate won't be able to spin. This plate is bolted to the outside plate, so the inside plate won't be able to move up and down. Um, so we'll be in good shape. So let me go ahead and grab a drill and the rivet tools. OK, so with the Andy Mark sprocket on here, I have lots of room underneath. Nothing's going to hit. The chain's not going to hit. The sprocket's not going to hit. So I can use any hole. Um, well, not any hole, but any of the three holes on the top or the bottom here are OK to drill through and rivet. So I've got a 3 16 drill bit, my 3 16 rivets, and I'm just going to go ahead and do, I'm going to do this top hole. So we'll drill that out, and then we're going to go through one wall of the box. And then let's double check to make sure this rivet is going to be big enough. This rivet is good. So the same size rivets that I've been using 
Um, I just check on the side, and if you line it up here, as long as that ball is making it past the wall, uh, we're going to be able to use that rivet to grip it and lock it in place. And we've only got a couple of rivets today, so we'll do it with the hand riveter. All right, so this side is good. And if you're really paranoid, you could add more rivets there. One should be enough. Um, but you definitely will want to keep an eye on that as the season goes. If it starts to loosen up, uh, you might need to replace it or add another one. So now I'm on the other side of the robot. Same thing. Drill a hole on the top one here. And then we will drop our rivet in. All right, top section is done. It's time to work on our 90 degree gearbox and the bottom section. Okay, next step is to build our max 90 degree gearbox. So we need this box, but if you remember, we opened this box when we were building the superstructure and we took this plate um, out of the box in order to, to uh, kind of give us our spacing here so we knew where we could put our brackets. So first step is we're gonna remove this. It's just gonna be the 1 8 hex key. We're just going to unscrew these 1032 bolts right here. All right, so we need that plate. Let's open up our box and get the rest of our parts out. Okay, the first bag we're looking for is 21, 21, 20 P07. It's the max 90 degree gearbox standoffs. So we're going to need two of those, which I think is all that was in there. And we also need the hardware pack. So go ahead and find your hardware pack. There should be a bunch of bolts inside there that we can pour out. Okay. And if you take a look at this plate, this side plate that we pulled out here, this side plate has, on one side, again, it's sort of completely flat. We have a bunch of holes, but there's no other kind of features. We have the cutouts and the holes. But on this side, four of the holes actually have like a, a clearance hole around them. Right? So you can see they're kind of sunken in. So on those holes, on this side, is where we're going to put our bolts through. And what we're looking for is this, the top of this plate sort of angles up, and we have sort of like a pointed side. And then on the bottom, we have the side with the notch missing out. So this is kind of, think of this as the top, uh, and this is the bottom. And what we're going to do is the top two holes, we're going to drop one of these bolts through, each of them. You can do one at a time if you want. And then on the other side, just grab the standoff, and just so you can by hand, screw that on. You can make it about as tight as you can by hand. So we'll screw that onto both of those. Okay. Then we need our bearings. So open up the bearing bag. And there are three bearings that are the same and one bearing that's different. So the one bearing that's different will slide it off to the side. We need one of the three that are the same. And you can put that bearing in. Should be going in from the same side that our spacers are on. Right, so we're going to drop that bearing in from the same side where our standoffs are. All right, next step. There is our max 90 degree gearbox output shaft. And this output shaft, it's not the same on both sides. So on one side, there's this extra bit of, it's a hex shape that's going around. On the other side, it's just the round and then the small ring. And also, I guess this ring is a little bit thicker on this side. So the side without the hex should be facing down and go right into that bearing. Okay. Next up, we want our 90 degree gearbox bottom plate. And 
eventually this plate is going to be sitting like this, holding everything together. There is a little notch here that will go into the notch on our previous section, but we got to build this section out first. So this one needs another one of the bigger bearings. Again, they do have a flange, so we're going to put them in from this side. The flange will sit on top of it. Right? And we want all of these little legs to be sticking up. That's the direction we want to put it in. The other side is just nice and smooth. That's not the side we want. It's this side. Push it in. All right. Next piece is the max 90 degree gearbox input shaft. So there are two of these gears. These are uh, miter gears or bevel gears. And we want the bigger one right now. And on this one, there's a hex hole on one side. And it's round around that. And it's sort of a bigger, taller, round area. If we turn it around on this side, it's a smaller round area. And you can see the teeth are facing up. So we're going to put this in to that bearing with the teeth facing up. And it should just drop right in there. Might have to wiggle it a little bit. There we go. And you can give it a check. That should spin nice and freely. All right, up next is the max 90 degree gearbox middle plate. I'm going to open that up. Now, this plate is going to go on top of here, but you can see the hole size doesn't match the hole uh, or the shaft on the top of that gear. So, we're going to use this smaller gear. So, the one different gear that doesn't have a flange is going to go down onto this top shaft of our gear here. And I'm just going to try to wobble it on carefully. I had one of these that was a little bit tight in the past, but this one looks like it is going to go all the way on. You need to make sure that this bearing is all the way down and flat with the top of that shaft. You should actually see a tiny bit of that shaft peeking out. Uh, so they should be basically even. If you can't get it down that far by pushing on it, remember, push around in a circle, push on whatever side looks high. If you can't get it around all the way, uh, you can do with a hammer. Again, a soft hammer and gentle taps around the outside. If it's not moving, you can get a socket that fits around the outside and give it a couple harder taps. But always work your way up. Do it as gently as possible with bearings. And I can see the bearing is still spinning nicely, and so is the gear. All right, now we're ready to put this plate on. So on one side, again, it's smooth and flat. On the other side, we have that little bit of a recessed hole in the middle. And so this area here is going to sit on that bearing. And it doesn't matter which direction it is. So we put it on, and then it can spin around, and it can be this way or this way. But line it up so that it's sort of like you know the rectangles. We're not making a plus sign. We're making a rectangle. OK, this is now going to drop onto here. And there's a couple things to look for. There are these two notches on the side here here and here. And those notches are where this plate is going to go. So this side of this plate will go in this notch. This side of the plate will go in this notch. We know this big notch on the bottom will go in the big cutoff here. And this back part of the plate is going to be sitting on top of our side plate here. All right, so we'll gently line that up. And should be able to get that to drop in. There we go. If yours doesn't drop in, again, the biggest cause for that is that if the bearing's not in all the way, it could be pushing the plates apart. Uh, and so it won't fit exactly the way we want. The other thing that you'll see is when I drop this in, if I pick it up a little bit, and be careful if you pick it up because it will fall apart, we have this back edge is pretty much flat. So if yours, if this plate is sticking way out past this little bottom bit like this, then again, that's probably the bearing is not in the way or it's falling apart on you. So you know, wiggle it back together. All right, we have one more piece to put on the top here. And that is our max 90 degree gearbox output shaft bevel gear. So grab your other bevel gear. And the idea here is the teeth on this bevel gear are going to mate with the teeth on this bevel gear. And we're actually going to be able to drive the power around a corner. So normally, when you have gears or sprockets, right, they line up and they'll spin with each other. Um, but in this case, they're going to go you know, 90 degrees around a corner. And that's going to help us package it much nicer on the robot. So get the teeth of this new bevel gear. Make sure they're facing downward. And you just got to line it up on that hex shaft in the middle. And make sure it drops all the way down. And you might have to turn it a little bit to get the teeth to mesh together. But you should be able to see in here now the teeth 
on the two gears are kind of interlocked. We call that mesh together. And when I turn the top gear, it is making the side gear spin. And I want you to go ahead and give it, give it a try. Make sure yours spins. And if it does, then what we're going to do is grab just a little bit of grease. We don't need a lot of grease for this one. If this is the only grease you have, go ahead and use it. I think I like the white lithium grease for this better. It's a little bit lighter, so it has a little bit less drag to it. Um, so that's another good grease to use. You can use whatever you have, though. And we're not doing a lot. We put a lot more on the gearbox, on the drivetrain gearbox, than we will here. So on this gear, we're just going to do a little tiny bit. And I'm just going to kind of get a little bit around the whole gearbox here. And I don't want to leave any. We had globs extra on the last one. This time, I don't want to do that. Just kind of brush it on. I think a paintbrush is really good for this. All right. So this one looks good. I'm going to set that down carefully. And I will do the same thing as much as I can on the other gear. But the, the grease will transfer between the gears, too. So we don't have to worry too much about it. So on this one, you can kind of work it on and spin it around, put some on, spin it around, and just keep going. A tiny bit more here, and we'll just keep going. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and drop this gear back on. Remember, the teeth should be facing down so they can mesh with the other gear. Perfect. All right, and give it a spin to make sure it's still working. And that feels nice and smooth for me. All right, and now I'm going to take a quick break and wash my hands to get the grease off it, and then we'll come back and finish assembly. Now we're ready to finish up the assembly here. We have one more uh, bearing, and we have one more side plate. So find yourself another max 90 degree gearbox side plate. And we'll slide that out. Now this side plate is going to drop down on the top. And then we'll be able to screw everything together. But before we do that, we want to put this bearing into it. So the bearing should go, once again, we have the side where there are these recessed holes for our bolts. And the other side where it's completely flat. Find the side where it's completely flat. And then drop the bearing in on that side. And then we are going to carefully flip it over and put it down so that bearing is going to go around this kind of shaft that's sticking out of our bevel gear that we put on. And if your bearing just falls out, it is OK to put it on the bevel gear first. Make sure the flange is down towards the teeth of the gear. So you can slide it on this way first, if that works better for you. And then take the plate. Make sure that the recessed holes are facing up on this plate when you put it on. Line it up, drop it in. It should all click together. And now we've got a bunch of little screws to put in. So we're going to add one. There are four recessed holes. One, two, three, four. We're going to put a bolt in each one. And don't tighten them up all the way yet. Just get them all in so they're kind of close. And we'll tighten everything up afterwards. There we go. Okay, so after we've done all four bolts on this side, uh, one thing that you can do is you could put the, uh, your shaft in really quickly. And you can spin it. And you should be able to spin it. And it should move around pretty nicely. I've got a little bit of some catches in mine. You can feel some, some parts where it's a little bit tighter. Um, but if it spins around, you're probably in good shape. If it feels really bad, um, then you might want to loosen these bolts up and try again. And if it still feels really bad, then you might want to go back and try the assembly one more time. What can happen is maybe if you have aluminum shavings or bits of metal that are around, if they get stuck in the teeth, you'll feel something really, really getting stuck. All right, so we did the four bolts on this side. They're, they're feeling pretty good for me. I'm going to flip it over. We already did two. We're now going to do the other two bolts. And those are the last two bolts for the 90 degree gearbox part. So after screwing these two in, I'm now going to go around. And I'm going to give them all, so I'm spinning until it's tight. And then I'm just going to give them a little turn 
a little like eighth of a, uh, eighth of a circle turn just to tighten them up the rest of the way. And then I'll go back to the other side and do that. So all eight bolts get a little extra little, just tug on them to make sure they're nice and secure. All right, and one more time, I'm going to put the shaft in. I'm going in the bottom hole. Theoretically, you can do it on the side hole, too. And that should also work. You should be able to spin it there as well. All right, and there's a little bit, a little bit of a catch there, not too bad. You can spin it a few times, and it should loosen up as well. If it feels really tight, again, just go ahead and loosen up some of your bolts. See if it gets better. And if it does, then uh, you can sort of readjust, retighten them in a different order and see if it stays nice and smooth. Um, another thing, too, is if it only feels good when the bolts are loose, you might not want to over, you might be over tightening the bolts. You definitely don't want to over tighten these bolts. Um, and there is something else that we can do with these bolts to make sure that they don't loosen up over time. And that is we can use something called Loctite on them. This is Loctite or thread locker. And the way this works, it's like glue, right? So if we put it on the bolt and screw it in, it actually hardens when, it, when there's not oxygen around, I think. So when you screw the bolt in, it will harden and glue the bolts in place. We talked about using nylock nuts where you cut into the nylon thread to hold stuff in place. In this case, we don't have any nylon nuts. We can't do that uh, here because we are screwing directly into the gearbox. So in the gearbox, right, we have just the threads. You can tighten it a lot to make it hold in place, but that's not great for this gearbox. Instead, we have this thread locker that will hold your bolts in place. Now, if you buy thread locker, I recommend this kind. Uh, it's 242, but no matter what you buy, it needs to say removable. And usually that means it should be blue and not red. Red Loctite is permanent Loctite. If you use red Loctite in here, it is never coming apart again. I think the only way you can break red Loctite free is by heating it up to some insane temperature. So that is not what we want. So what I'm going to do now is, just because I want to keep my bolts a little bit looser, we'll go ahead and unscrew the bolts. And we did put this together just to make sure it was working first before we put the, the thread locker on. So I'll take a bolt out. And it takes very little of this thread locker to work. So let me unscrew this. It's really just, usually I like to put the bolt on my Allen wrench, and then just, just a little drop is going to be plenty. Right? And then we'll go ahead and screw that back in. And this time again, when it gets to the end, I'm not really going to tighten it much more, just a little bit to make sure it's nice and flat, and then I'm going to stop because we know the thread locker will hold it in place so we don't have to over tighten it. We'll do the same thing with all eight of these bolts. Now we test it one last time. And that is spinning pretty good. That is about as good as I've had it spinning. So I am happy with that assembly. So we are ready to put our next section together. Well, we have one more piece here. And that is our max planetary spline to half inch hex adapter. So we're going to take this piece out. And on this piece, you'll see on one side, it's a hex shape. On the other side, it's just a gear. So a spline is kind of like you know, a gear shape. And if you look at the planetary that we have, there is this uh, hex hole here that goes all the way through, like you can see all the way through it. But if I turn it, so on the opposite of the pointed side, the bottom here, this one does not go all the way through. That's the hole we're looking for. We're going to take this hex adapter. We're going to put the hex into the hex and just push it all the way in. If it's, if it's sticky, make sure it goes until it's nice and flat and that spline is all the way in. And you should be able to kind of turn that a little bit. It might be a little bit tougher to turn because it's hard to grab onto. All right, and we also have to grab now our max planetary gearbox. We're going to need a Neo motor. So this should be a brushless Neo motor. 
not the Neo 550. Make sure you get the, uh, the bigger one here. And we've got three different stages for this planetary. We have a 5 to 1, a 5 to 1, and a 3 to 1. All right, so we'll start out by opening up our max planetary box here. And open up the Neo Motor box. So that is our motor. And on this motor, we've got a little keyway on it. You remember we dealt with keys and keyways back when we were assembling our sim motors on the drivable chassis. Okay, and then we just got the big output there. All right. And this has got a bunch of parts. The first part we're looking for is the max planetary universal input stage. Open that up. We get a lot of little baggies from Rev. All right, this, we've got a big side with a hole and the side that's flat. We're going to put the flat side down. It's going to drop right onto the motor. And there are going to be a bunch of holes. These are threaded holes on the motor here. And we've got our clearance holes up here that we can use to drill, uh, sorry, on the outside here and here that we can use to screw this motor into the planetary transmission. And Guess we want to think about it for just one second. This is going to go on like this eventually, and this is going to go onto our robot like this. So we want to be able to attach our motor with the wires facing, I think facing back, the, uh, you know what? I think I like facing, facing this way so they can come down on the inside of the frame and then get to our electronics. Right, so basically how we attach this plate is going to determine which direction those wires are facing. And I think when we're done, we're going to run them down along this upright, down to the frame to be able to wire them in. So something like that seems good. So this is going to bolt on like this. This is going to be hanging out like this. So that's the direction we want everything to go. And to line up those bolt holes, we need to be this way. All right. And my output fell out. That's all right. Push it back in. All right. So what we're looking for is we have these two tabs. And if you kind of hold it so that the motors are facing you, this hole that's sticking up here should be on the right of the motors as you face the wires, or on the right of the motor as you face the wires. And then this one should be on the left. And then you just rotate this until these other holes line up with the nearest holes to that position. So I think right about there is where I'm going to attach mine. Now, of course, if you attach this in a different spot, that's OK. Your wires are just going to be on a different spot. Um, and you're just going to have to route them a little bit differently when we get to that step. So I am opening up the uh, Max Planetary Hardware Kit. Got a lot of bolts here. The bolts we are looking for for this step are these shorter um, I think these are number 10s, 1032s. And I will just drop one in and screw that down into the motor. Now, again, this one we can make um, nice and tight. But it's not a bad idea, since we have the Loctite out, to also add Loctite on these bolts. So let's go ahead and do that while we're here. Just a little drip. And same thing for our other bolt on the other side. OK. The next piece that we're looking for, let me move my stages a little bit out of the way here. We are looking for the. Max Planetary 8 millimeter Input Couple Kit. Coupler Kit. Be careful opening this bag, because inside this bag is not just the big coupler piece, which is easy to see, but there are two teeny tiny machine keys as well that we do not want to lose. 
And we're only going to use one of them. So actually, I'm going to put the other one back in the bag. And I'm going to put this bag not in my pile of bags that I'm going to throw away. I'm going to put this on the other side of the table so I don't lose it. All right, now on that motor shaft, and you can just turn the motor shaft so it faces whichever direction you want. But we have that keyway. And this key, it's a little bit interesting. So if you look, there are rounded edges on this key. When we put this in, I want the rounded edges to be kind of facing the way it is on the table. We don't want to turn it this way, so the rounded edges are sort of rounding around the front top and bottom. We want them to be rounding around the sides. And that's the orientation that we want to put this key into the keyway. So if you just drop that in, it should fit in there pretty nicely. Mine is nice and loose. And once you're done with that, go ahead and slide it all the way to the back of the keyway. Now this can fall out really easily, so you've got to be careful with the next step, which is to take our coupler here. And the coupler on one side, you can see it has that spline or that gear pattern. On the other side, it comes down to a point. And we can see the hole, which will fit on the motor shaft. And we can see the keyway, which is going to fit on our key. So I'm going to line that keyway up with the other keyway and the key. And I'm going to slide this in. And you usually have to wiggle it a little bit to get it to line up perfectly. But then you can push it all the way on to the back. Now, at this point, set your motor on the table like this. Because if I tip my motor forward, that key can still slide out and fall out. If it does, you can either do the entire assembly again the way we did it before, or you can try to slide the key back in to what's there. You might have to wiggle the, the coupler a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this in this orientation as we build the rest of our gearbox here. All right, next up is the, um, oh, we don't need that. So you get a half inch hex socket output. We don't need that. We need our three stages now. So we have our five to one stage, five to one stage, and three to one stage. And these, you just open them up, take the piece out. These are already greased, um, which I'm sure you will feel as you are doing this. And what I'm going to do is start with, we're going to end up wanting to put our five to one stage on first. So I'm going to take the first five to one stage that we're going to use. I'm going to put that so that this gear is face down and the hole is face up. I'm going to take the second 5 to 1 stage, and I'm going to put that on top. And I believe there are some magnets that are going to help hold this in place. But make sure you line up these holes on the side. So we don't want this to go in kind of crooked. It won't like nest in either. If you get it lined up in the right spot, it should drop all the way in and sit nice and flat. All right, and again, we have the hole facing up. So now we're going to take out our 3 to 1 stage. And the same deal, just line up the holes on the side. And you might have to wiggle a little bit to get the gears to mesh, and then snap that down. And you want to look at your stack, and you should see kind of no gaps here. Everything should be stacked up nice and cleanly, nice and flat. Now this stack is going to go onto our motor here. And we've got these two holes on the outside. That's where we're lining up our holes to. And remember, the 5 to 1 stage should be first. Oh, Also, the labels are only on one side. So if you really want to keep everything pretty, you can line all the labels up which I felt compelled to do. All right, we're going to take the output shaft here in the main hole. This uh, gear is going to mesh with our other gear here. So we're going to line that up. And if it doesn't drop on, you might have to wiggle it around a little bit to get it to. So if you put it on and there's a little bit, any gap here. So if you can see right now, I have a tiny bit of gap between these two plates. That is not OK. You've got to wiggle it until it's flat. So now there's no gap there. No gap on the other side. Now we know this is all the way in, in the right spot. All right. And instead of using the output shaft, like this shaft would go on, or this uh, stage would go on and give us a hex output, we're not using it like that, though, because we have our 90 degree gearbox that we already built. So this 90 degree gearbox is going to go on here. And remember, those holes will line up with their, these holes in the corners that are threaded. So. Again, you just got to kind of find a place, line up that middle, and wiggle it till it's on. And then you can spin it around until those holes line up. And I think it'll work this way or this way. And I'm not sure that it actually matters too much which direction you put it. Um, if you put it in a different direction than I'm putting it, the only thing it's going to do is I think it's going to make your motor spin the opposite direction, 
which in the program, we're going to tell it which direction to spin anyway, so it's not a big deal. All right, so we're going to line that up. And for me, I have, well, yeah, I mean, I have the gears on this stack, I have the gears to the left, but also we can choose which way we attach it to the frame. So I think I'm going to attach it to my robot this way so the wires are going forward. So I have the gears on, if you're looking at the wires, I have the gears on the right. And then there are a bunch of different length bolts for this next step. And the idea is with these gearboxes, you, you can stack as many of these stages as you want. If you only have one stage, obviously you need shorter bolts. We have three stages on here. So of all the bolts here, we need the longest two. I believe those are two inch long bolts. And we're just going to slide them up from the bottom. And it'll go all the way through, and we'll be able to screw it into our planetary on top. But we're going to do one little thing first, which is if we turn this a little bit to its side, we can go ahead and add just a little bit of Loctite on the top here. Okay, And then I'm going to turn this around and bring it in and screw it in. Sometimes adding the Loctite after you go through all of these empty holes is nice because less of the Loctite is going to get rubbed off on the pieces that you're passing through. Oh, and this one is a bigger size. This is a 532nds Allen wrench, which is, I guess, what we used for the other bolts to mount it into the Neo. And for this one, I'm not going to tighten this one yet. I'm going to get it close, and I'm going to stop. Then we're going to go ahead and do the other side. This time, I guess, since I've already started, I will just add a little bit of the Loctite to the bolt. And I'm kind of, I pushed it into the threads a little bit more just so it doesn't wear off on the plastic as we go through. So we'll push that up. Screw it in on this side as well. And I'm going to go just until I feel it hit the end, and I'm going to stop. I'm not really going to tighten down on that one at all. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I found it stopped. I'm going to stop tightening it in. And the Loctite's going to hold those bolts in place. One thing that can happen is if you really crush down on those bolts, you can squeeze kind of these stages together, uh, and that can make it harder to uh, move afterwards. So we can try to put this in. You will not be able to turn this by hand anymore, no matter what you try. Um, also, it came with a handy dandy little shaft that we can use for testing too. So I'm going to slide this in. I'm going to grab a half inch wrench. Because our output shaft is a half inch. And I like to put the box side on just so it doesn't slip off as easily. Um, and you should be able to get this to turn with the wrench. It's not going to be easy. I'm pulling pretty hard. But you should be able to get it to turn. If it doesn't turn, my suggestion is to loosen up the bolts, see if it turns, and then go ahead and try tightening the bolts back in, but tighten them a little bit less. That's why we're using the Loctite, so we don't really have to crank down on the bolts to get it to lock in place. And mine is spinning about as good as I would expect. This looks good to me. All right, so that is our neoplanetary and 90 degree gearbox done. Now let's attach it to the robot. All right, let's get this attached to our frame. Remember, we had the plate already attached to where it was going to go. So we already know where it goes. Uh, we have the bolts here ready to go. We have our outside bearing plate already in place, or mega bearing block, I believe it's called. Um, so we need our half inch, or sorry, eighth inch hex key. And if you look at our gearbox here, we've got these four holes that we haven't used yet. And those are all tapped holes. And those are going to go back onto those four bolts. So we can line this up this way. We can line it up this way. We can line it up. We can't line it up that way because it's going to hit. Um, but if you remember, what we did was we took this pointed side, and that should start facing up in the air. And then we're going to kind of go to the nearest point from there. So this side is going to be kind of parallel to our upright here. And then the points are facing sort of straight up in the air, which means our motor is going to hang more or less straight down. And then from the outside, we're just going to screw in all of these bolts.
right? And I want you to leave them, I tighten that one too much, leave it nice and loose. We want to have some play in this um, piece for a second. All right, so my plate can still rattle around a little bit, uh, and as can the motor. And we're going to use that to make sure that we can get our shafts all aligned, or our holes all aligned. So the next thing we need are two of these um, bearings. We've got the hex bearings, half inch hex bearings, just like we used up on the top of our robot. And what we're going to do is slide one into this bearing plate. Push it all the way in. And then we're going to take our second one and slide that one into the bearing plate all the way on the other side of the robot. Now make sure it is all the way in and all the way flat. Again, if it's not and you need to give it some taps, or you can tap around the outside, or again, you can find a socket that fits around the outside. But these need to be all the way in and flat. And now what we're going to try to do is pass our hex shaft all the way through this entire system. You got to kind of move it around and wiggle it to get it to line up and go through the next bit. Aha, uh -huh, got it. <clears throat> okay. We'll keep going. There we go. And then we gotta line it up with the bearing on the other side and slide it through. Now, if yours slides through nicely, like mine, well, eventually once I got it started did, and it makes it through this other bearing block on the other side then guess what? You are aligned correctly. You're good to go. Um, if it didn't go through, what you're going to want to do is on this other side, you can loosen up this plate, this bearing plate over here. Uh, we need the 3 8 wrench on the inside. If you loosen that up, that plate's going to be able to move around a little bit. Um, so then it'll give you a little bit more play to get that shaft started. If it still doesn't go when you do that, what you can do is you can actually take these bolts all the way out and we drilled those holes at 3 16 of an inch, or 0.1875. You can try the next biggest size drill bit that you have from that. You can go up one size in the drill bit, and that'll give these bolts more room to wiggle around, which means this plate can shift around a little bit. And if you remember, when we drilled the big hole behind that bearing, we made it big enough that you have room also for the bearing to move around in there. So the one thing you have to watch out for, though, is you cannot drill a hole bigger than the uh, sorry, actually, if you take the bolt all the way out and you only drill the bigger hole in the aluminum box, you're OK, because then the hole doesn't get bigger than the head because the plate won't change. So the hole will stay, or the, the bolt will stay grabbing onto the plate, but we can have a bigger hole on the back. And so the, what you have to watch out for is you can't make the hole on the back bigger than the nut. The nut still has to be able to grab onto something there. So if you make the hole too big in your adjustments, the bolts just won't work anymore. And in fact, if you have to do that, it's OK. Probably you just need to stick a washer, a metal washer, behind each of those bolts to help pick up the hole. Um, it's nicer if you don't have to do that, though, so try to just adjust it with what we've got. And then if you need to make the holes a little bit bigger, you can. All right, we have one more step that we're going to try to do here. And that is we are using the Andy Mark sprockets. These are 24-2 sprockets. And we can slide one on this side. And we can slide one on this side. And this is how long we need our shaft to be, exactly. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to slide this back until it is exactly flat on the sprocket over here. And I'll use, maybe I'll use the side of this wrench because that's pretty flat. So that's perfectly flat on that sprocket. And eventually, we're going to screw a bolt in the side with a washer to hold everything on so it can't fall off. So we want this to be pretty close to flat. We don't really want it to be shorter than this. 
Um, if you cut it a little bit longer, that's probably OK. It's probably better to cut it a tiny bit long than a tiny bit short. And then on the other side, right, this is exactly where we want to make our cut. So if we cut it right flush with this uh, sprocket here, then we have exactly the right length shaft for my robot. And this way, if I made this piece a little bit shorter or a little bit longer than the official cut, right, my gap here could be a little bit shorter or a little bit longer. We could be bending this stuff in or pushing it out. We did try to mount it down here first and then do that later. But um, your distance between here and here might be a little bit different than my distance between there and there. So, what we can do now is we can try to mark this. Um, I don't think it'll show up on camera, but I know I can get a Sharpie line on there that I'll be able to see. And I'm going to just put plenty of Sharpie so I know I'll be able to see it when it comes off. And then we'll also try scribing a line here. So if I grab, I've got my snap punch, which has got a nice point on it. I'll just try to scratch a line right along the edge of the sprocket in a couple places. And we'll see what that looks like when I take it out. But I think I've got a really good scribe line there. OK, so now I'm going to take the two sprockets off. Oh, yeah. So I can see exactly where my scribe line is, so I know where I'm going to want to cut. All right, then we got to just get the whole shaft out. And if this bearing falls out, no big deal. That actually probably makes it easier to take out, so you know, don't worry about it. And don't forget, we have not tightened this side up yet. We're going to tighten it up after we put the shaft in for the, for the last time. All right, so I've got my line here. I'm going to head over to the saw and make a cut. Uh, and then I'll bring it back. And we actually got to tap a hole, and then we'll put it in and be ready to go. All right, so we have to make this cut. Now, our bandsaw is not big enough to make that cut. So if that's all you got available to you, it's time for the hacksaw again. Uh, and with the hacksaw, again, you could cut it a little bit long and try to clean it up on the bandsaw. Give yourself half an inch or so. Of course, we have our chop saw over here. We're going to go ahead and use that. And you want to be extra careful. Let me flip this around. So the piece that we're using is the shorter piece here. No, it's the longer piece here. And we want to make sure that we keep the line. I want to go really close to the line, but I don't want to remove that line. Because again, I don't want this shaft to be too short. So that looks like it should cut just up next to the line. So I'll go ahead and clamp this in. And let's make our cut. We'll head back over to the other table, file it. We've got to tap a hole in it, and then we'll be ready for final installation. All right, let's get the edge filed off so it's nice and clean. And then I, what I mentioned was we are going to take this shaft. It's going to be just perfectly the distance across our robot like this. But then, Right? We want to make sure that, for example, these bearings don't fall off. There's nothing that was holding the sprockets on from falling off. Right? So what we want to be able to do is screw a bolt into the end of this. And if there was a washer next to that bolt, it'll create like kind of a wall on the end of our shaft here that nothing can go past. Um, and to do that, we have to do something called tapping. So the hole inside here right now is just a smooth, round hole. But it is the right size for us. We don't have to drill it out at all. But we need it to have those threads inside of it. So to do that, we need a tap handle and a 1032 tap. Make sure this is 1032, yep. And usually the way these tap handles work is there's a square end on your tap. So you put that in, and you tighten it down, and it should kind of grab onto it so it's held in there. And then basically, we just spin this in. This has the cutting flutes on it, the spiral on it. So we just spin this in. It cuts the threads. And then we spin it out, and we're good. But there are a few things we have to do along the way. So the first thing is, if you don't have a vise, it's going to be really hard to kind of do this by hand the whole time. Holding on to this bottom part is going to be hard. So you can use a half inch wrench to do it. But you really want this to be stable and not moving. It's easy to get the tap off center. If you, if you tap in crooked, um, it's a good way to have your hole be crooked. And sometimes that can lead to breaking the tap as well. So we're going to be very careful when we do this step. And if you haven't already ordered your taps, it's probably a good idea to get a couple um, because they do break. It can happen. So I'm going to clamp mine into my vise here because now I know this isn't moving on me. 
and I have a really good, sturdy, stable area to work with. It's also pretty straight up and down. So when I go to start with my tap, I'm going to spend a lot of time making sure it's as straight as possible. The other thing when you're tapping, into metal anyway, uh, is you want to use some kind of cutting fluid. So I actually have tap magic, which is, you know, I don't know, maybe the official fluid for this, but any cutting oil will work. Um, so I just kind of get some in the hole, get some all along the tap. All right, and so at the beginning, right, I'm going to spend a lot of time really lining it up and making sure my first couple turns go in as straight as possible. And at some point, it'll basically have cut in enough that it's sort of guiding itself. And so at this point, I'm not really aiming it anymore. It's in several threads, and it's just going to kind of do what it wants to do. Now, as we're doing this, we're going to do a few turns forward, and then every once in a while, you want to back it off a little bit. And that, we're making all these metal chips inside there. We want to break them free. So if you try to go all the way down without backing up every once in a while, you're going to get a lot of the chips building up, and it can add a lot of pressure, make it hard to turn the tap, and that is another way that the tap can break. All right? So a couple forward, a little bit back, forward for a bit, a little bit back, and we just keep doing this. And one of the worst parts of breaking the tap off in here is not just that you have to buy a new tap, but it's almost impossible to get the broken tap out of the piece. So it almost means you need to go and remake the piece that you were trying to tap. Okay, and just don't force it. If it starts to feel really tight, just, just back it up a little bit, and then go ahead and try cutting again. And we don't really have to get to the bottom of our tap. I think we're going to put 3 8 inch long bolts in here. So if we tap this hole to about 3 8 we're going to be in good shape. Maybe a little bit more just for safety. And what we can do, too, is we can measure it before we put it in so we know how far we want to go. So let's go ahead and back this out. And you'll see when I get this out, just like all this aluminum that's sort of like caking up in the area, right? That's what's making it harder and harder to turn. And that's what's making it harder to uh, screw in and more likely to break. So if, if it gets really tight, you can actually back it all, all the way out, clean that up. You could add a little bit more of the cutting fluid to it. Um, the key is when you start again, though, make sure you find the previous threads. If it doesn't feel like it's going in super easy at the beginning, you're probably not lined up with the previous threads. But another thing I'm going to do here just to check our, our depth of the cut is, so when it starts, that's like zero. And I would say, yeah, if we get up a little bit past halfway on here, then we're going to be deep enough for our bolt. So let's go ahead and screw this in and see where I left off. Yep, so now I feel it hitting again. I'm going to go a little bit farther. I think that was probably far enough. But let's just go a little bit more. Again, forward for a bit, and then backwards. All right, that is definitely deep enough. Let's unscrew this, flip it around. Same thing on the other side.
I've got a couple of, these are 1032, of course, because that's what we tapped the hole for. Uh, they are 3 8 of an inch long, so 375 long uh, bolts. And I think that's what we're going to end up using to hold these washers and everything in place. So let's go ahead and test them. Um, a lot of times, there might still be some bits of aluminum in there. So if it feels really, really rough, if you have compressed air, you can try to blow it out. Uh, you can <laughs> kind of blow on it that way as well, just to kind of knock stuff out. It's nice because the hole goes all the way through the shaft. So a lot of the pieces, we don't have to get them to come out the top. All right, but let's go ahead and screw this in and make sure it goes all the way until it touches. I'm going to use my 530 seconds Allen wrench here. And that is pretty good. That is all the way in. Let's get the other side, test the other side out. And that is also very good. All right, so our holes are good. They're tapped. They're working. I'm actually going to leave these bolts here because I know I'm going to need them later. Um, you can take them out if you want. We're not going to actually install the sprockets in this video. Uh, we're going to wait until we have all the chain stuff as well. So we want to put this back in, though. So let's go ahead and slide it in once again. And if you have a hard time, like I'm having, getting it to go into this uh, transmission, if you take this first bearing off here and slide that on separately, there we go. Now I can actually see the transmission and line up the hex with it. And that was a lot easier. All right, and then at some point, you just need to push that bearing back into the plate. Remember, my plate and motor over here is still loose. So we're going to slide this in until it goes through there. Spin that hex to line up. There we go. And we're through. We can double check with our sprockets just to make sure we got our cut a good distance. So if I slide those sprockets on, I can see on this side, well, I can't see it, but I can feel it. It's just, I can just feel a bump sticking out there. And on this side, I'm just about perfectly flat. So I think we got our length spot on perfect. Now, there's nothing to hold the sprockets on yet because I don't have my washers on there. So I'm just going to take the sprockets off so I don't lose them. The last thing we have to do, though, is remember this side is all loose. We were leaving it loose until we could align our shaft. And so this is another good reason. Put your sprockets on. Make sure you center that shaft so there's about the same amount on either side, just in case it gets harder to move. We should be able to adjust it later. And then we're going to go ahead and take these four bolts, and we're going to make them all the way tight. And this shaft, we don't need to take it out again. So if it gets, oh, wrong Allen wrench. There it is. So if it gets tight and the shaft doesn't move as well, that's OK, because you know it's already in place. All right, tighten on that, tighten on that. All right, and we are good. Oh, and my shaft still slides very freely, <laughs> which is a good thing. All right, that is it. We have successfully installed, well, assembled and installed our planetary gearbox with our motor. We've got our 90 degree gearbox. We've got our jack shaft in place, our upper bearings. We're basically ready to put on the sprockets, the chain, and our arm, which we will get to in the next video. As always, special thanks to Argosy and everybody.